Hey there, everybody. My name is Jeremy Siskin. I'm the author of Playing Solo Jazz Piano and Jazz Piano Fundamentals. I just got some more of these guys in stock, so uh, feel free to order them uh, from my website. Today, I wanted to talk about um, a question that I got um, via some YouTube comments, um, which was about, you know, if you have these, di these progressions that stay in the same key, you know, maybe they just go like from the one chord to the six chord to the four chord to the five chord, and they're just kind of hanging around in the same key, how do you make them colorful? Um, and the question kind of asks, like, do I have to reharmonize it? And my answer is no, you don't have to reharmonize those things to make them colorful. And so I want to show you um, at least four ways. I usually end up thinking about thinking of some more while I do these videos um, that you can make these things some more, a little bit more colorful. And because it is around Christmas time, I thought we'd use the progression for Jingle Bells as our, um, you know, test progression, so uh, maybe here I am in C major, it's a C major chord, to F major, to G, using like the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord. Um, so it shouldn't be so complicated. Um, so, you know, the first thing, if I'm improvising, um, obviously for this whole thing, I can use the C major scale. okay, but we could definitely add some color. So um, I'm going to be very teacherly and write on my little blackboard today. You know, the first thing that I would try to do is use passing tones and neighbor tones. And neighbor tones. All right. So passing tones go between two, uh, two notes of the scale. So for example, Right, C, D, D sharp would be a passing tone between G and A, G, G sharp, A, or between A and B, A, A sharp, B. And already that's going to add a lot of color. Um, the great Barry Harris passed recently and he would talk about these bebop scales, um, which, you know, traditionally the major bebop scale was just a major scale with a passing tone between the fifth and the sixth note. So we could call it a sharp five. So like a major scale with a sharp five. And there's no evidence, I don't think that like Charlie Parker, you know, thought about this bebop major scale, but he did write in the beginning of Donna Lee, we're in A flat major and uses this passing tone between the sixth and the fifth. So of course, You know, he was using that sharp fifth. So if I'm going to now improvise with Jingle Bells using some passing tones. slowly so I only use passing tones and don't use anything else. Now the other thing I wrote was neighbor tones and neighbor tones are notes that simply um, go a half step away from a chord tone. It's most common to use chromatic lower neighbors although you can use upper neighbors sometimes too. Um, I was talking with uh, my friend Amaro Ruiz, a great pianist here in LA and he was talking about describing neighbor tones as going to your friend's house um, but then the important part is you always got to come back home. You can't just stay at your friend's house, right? If, uh, you're going to be very unwelcome <laughs> if you don't return home. And it's the same way with neighbor tones. If you go to the neighbor tone and you don't return, it's going to sound very unresolved, right? Uh, so you always have to come back home. 
So same thing if I'm gonna improvise using neighbor tones on Jingle Bells. I gotta get back into this chord progression. Noticing, if you're very astute, is that I'm not always starting on the main note and then going to the neighbor tone. Sometimes you can just start on the neighbor tone. So where you end up, that's not negotiable. But where you start, that is negotiable. You could start either on the note of the scale or the chord, or you could start on that neighbor tone. Now, a very special kind of neighbor tone is called a chromatic enclosure. Enclosures are very widely used in jazz styles. Um, and with a chromatic enclosure, you're gonna go a half step above and then a half step below your target note. So it's kind of like a neighbor on both sides. You're gonna go over to your neighbor on this side, then you'll go to the neighbor on that side, and then you'll come back home. Now, when I do these enclosures, and I think I've talked about this on the channel before, um, the important thing is you want to land on that, um, on the main tone, the target tone. If you get there too early or you get to the target tone kind of not on a stronger beat, um, then it gets very confusing as to which is the main tone you're aiming for and which are the neighbor tones. So I'm going... <laughs> devices that you can use to add chromaticism. Passing tones, neighbor tones, you, know, you can think about it as your bebop scale. Your chromatic enclosure is a special kind of neighbor tone. It's a double neighbor, essentially. Um, but we could also choose some different scales, and particularly when we get to dominant chords, we have this whole category of altered dominant scales. I'm going to go through them kind of quickly here, uh, but there is a full listing of great ultra dominant scales in jazz piano fundamentals. I think chapter 11 or chapter 12 is going to run you through some really good ultra dominant scales. So um, whole tone, oof, I spelled that poorly. The whole tone scale is all whole steps. And remember, these are ultra dominant scales because they can only be used for dominant chords. So if I'm doing an a whole tone scale starting from G for the G7. I'd go G, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, F, G. Notice there's only six notes in a whole tone scale. Did I say that right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I said that right. Um, the half whole octatonic is really, really commonly used in jazz. Um, I did a whole video deep dive on this one. So if you want some more information, look for my deep dive on the octatonic scale, sometimes called the diminished scale. And for this one, you're alternating half steps and whole steps. So for my G7, half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step. Or we've got what I call the altered scale, which other people call the super Locrian scale or the diminished whole tone scale. Um, and this one's a little bit complicated to get into, but it's like the uh, melodic minor scale, a half step above. So for our G7, it'd be like playing the ascending form of A flat melodic minor. Okay. So now when I get to my G7, I'm gonna use some of these ultra dominant scales. So there's a neighbor tone. There's an enclosure.
I'm using my Apple octatonic scale. Little neighbor tone. I'm gonna do a passing tone. Neighbor tone. Whole tone scale. Now, it might be hard for you to recognize some of these scales because when I play these scales, I don't just play. Right? I'm making interesting shapes through this scale. Okay. And now, I only had this, that one opportunity um, to include the alter dominant scale. But um, what jazz musicians do all, 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 all the time is we add in more dominant chords that we can use these scales even more. And we call this tonicization. Tonicization means adding five chords that aren't necessarily in the original um, piece. So instead of just holding on to this C major chord and then going to F, I could go C, G7, C, G7, and then C, C7, F. So I could stuff a lot more chords in there. And now I can use a ton of these altered dominant scales. So number two and three go together. Hear what I did there? Again, my original was... Now I went. I added a lot more dominant chords in there. And I could keep going with that. Just using these scales. Sounds fancy, but it ain't that fancy. And so tonicization, you know, it is technically reharmonizing, right? I'm adding in chords. But for most jazz pianists, we don't even think about it as reharmonizing. We think of that, those chords as being kind of baked in to the harmony. Um, that if you have a C major chord, yeah, you're going to go to G7 every now and then. That's just kind of part of the deal of having some chords. Um, so tonicization can be super, super useful. And then number four is blues. Whenever you have a chord that's clearly grounded, or sorry, whenever you have a chord progression that's clearly grounded in a single key, you can use the blues scale of that key. So here, you know, we're doing this in C, so I could use some C blues scale. So instead of playing C major scale all the time, I could throw in a little blues. I kind of just said this, but let me say it in a more clear way. Remember that the blue scale goes with a key center rather than a chord. So as I switch to F major, I don't switch to the F blue scale. I don't know if it was on awful, um, but generally what we want to do is if we say, okay, this whole time we're basically in C, we could use a C major scale. You could also use the C blue scale. Um, now, if you overuse it, you're gonna sound really, really bluesy, right? I could play the blues scale the whole time, but it, now it's gonna sound like it's in a totally different genre. If we play, and then I go, like it technically 
totally sounds fine, but it just sounds like really different than the original. So um, my advice is that you sprinkle it in just every now and then um, instead of trying to use it exclusively. So if I'm playing... And now here's my solo. with your blues scale, um, then I think you're going to get a result that both fits in to the original, um, but also has a little bit more color. So now I want to do just a little bit of playing in slow motion, and I'm going to tell you what device I'm using. I'm going to do my best. It's doing a lot of things at once. So here we go. So first, I'm going to start out just so simply in C major. <laughs> neighbor tone, passing tone, neighbor tone, I'm oh, sorry, passing tone, neighbor, I'm going to use the whole tone scale. You heard, and I used, that's the octatonic scale. Blues. Neighbor tone. Passing tone. Hear all those passing tones? Also a little bit, bit bluesy, blues scale. Altered scale. Okay, so all these things can work together to create a really um, melodically diverse and harmonically colorful solo. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, again, if you want to support me in the channel, like, subscribe, and check out my books. Ooh, that's a terrible angle. Playing solo jazz piano. Um, and then this new guy, Jazz Piano Fundamentals. Just back in stock in the store. I will not have it to you in time for Christmas, uh, but I'll have it in time to, uh, for New Year's, so that's something. <laughs> uh, take care, everybody. Uh, Merry Christmas if I don't uh, see you first. Bye-bye.